you to the agents assembly healthy moscow in this uh, place in order to wake up a little bit uh, instead of coffee you just can give a round of applause uh, I would like to share some statistical words uh, with you so that we can be aware of the scale. So, third day of the 18th Assembly Healthy Moscow, the biggest event uh, in uh, the sphere of medicine. What happens uh, over the past three days? So, over 330 press approaches uh, with participation of governmental structures uh, and Russian international experts. Uh, we had uh, over 50 discussions and sessions, over 30 expositions uh, uh, with participation of the Russian healthcare system. We also had over 100 master classes presentation, over 360 journalists visited the events dedicated to the assembly, and a really mesmerizing figure. Over 15,000 materials were published in mass media, and over 30,000 people visited the assembly during the first day of our event. So the special thing about uh, this assembly is that uh, we are uh, now discussing not issues uh, amongst uh, uh, experts, uh, but also any citizen can participate in it. Uh, and uh, before we start uh, the next uh, session, and it's called uh, uh, actual problems of um, maxillofacial uh, surgery, I would like to start with a very pleasant uh, surprise. The point is that in the framework of assembly, we would like uh, to summarize the results. Uh, uh, the uh, competition called uh, the formula of life uh, uh, it uh, has been hosted uh, starting from 2003 which is a great opportunity not just to share professional expertise and qualification and uh, to boost your experience at uh, at the same time, get a grasp of our doctors today's picture and image. I think that all those who decide to dedicate their life to this domain are real heroes. And the framework of our festival, I would like to announce the winner and the nomination, the doctor of the maxwell facial surgery. So for a solemn uh, awarding ceremony, I would like to invite the moderator of our today's session, uh, Doctor of Medical Sciences, Professor and the Chief Specialist for Maxillofacial Surgery at the Department uh, of Health of Moscow and Chief uh, Director of Maxillofacial Surgery for Veterans uh, and uh, responsible for the Department of the Dentistry and Maxillofacial Surgery of the National uh, Research and Scientific uh, um, Institute named after Pedagov, uh, Viktor Alexeyevich Pechenko. Good morning, dear colleagues. We would like to start our today's session with a pleasant thing. The winner, the best maxillofacial surgeon, is Ciklin Ivan Leonidovich, head of the Department of Maxillofacial Surgery at the Botkin Hospital. Uh, colleagues, uh, and apart from that, I would like to say that in nomination, uh, best specialist uh, in uh, maxillofacial surgery, uh, um, it uh, has been on the list for two years in a row. And of course, uh, you all made your own contribution to that. Uh, finally, we deserved uh, some attention, and now uh, we are amongst uh, all the other surgeons, uh, uh, which is no surprise because uh, uh, we really deserved it. And we merited it. Thank you very much, Ilya Leonidovich. We would like uh, to congratulate you on that. Uh, and now we would like uh, to talk a little bit about uh, actual issues in the sphere of uh, maxillofacial surgery. And now I would like to give the floor to Viktor Alexeyevich, our moderator. I would like to ask our speakers to take their seats. Please take your seats. While forming the program for our today's session, it was really difficult to 
referring for uh, that's a coverage of a big number of events uh, in different sources. But from my perspective, uh, since uh, uh, we are working for the city, uh, we uh, picked uh, three. I mean, so I'd like to talk about cardiovascular uh, formations, uh, also uh, development in maxillofacial surgery. Uh, and uh, the third one, which is uh, always uh, very relevant uh, for Moscow clinics, uh, those uh, working in urgent uh, assistance medical services, uh, is inflammatory uh, uh, processes and traumas. Could you please bring the presentation to the screen? Uh, uh, treatment uh, of post-traumatic defects and cranial deformations. Uh, what actually characterized the relevancy of uh, these uh, uh, patients? Uh, well, of course, uh, uh, we understand that there is certain frequency and different traumas uh, within maxillofacial area and uh, cranium, post-traumatic deformations. What it's all about? This complicated complex uh, uh, where uh, different structures uh, are uh, damaged uh, and uh, you know, they are. Uh, uh, also can be uh, impacted uh, by uh, some uh, uh, and can use to some inflammatory uh, processes out of uh, the reasons uh, leading to uh, the formation of post-traumatic deformations of the bones uh, and the cranium. Uh, well, uh, this is the main, of course, uh, some mistakes that can be made uh, in treatment. Uh, uh, the main principles uh, that should be applied during the treatment are uh, the use of operative access so that uh, could allow us to uh, easily manipulate and provide for visual control uh, within the area of operative intervention. It's not possible just to uh, uh, use uh, small penetrations or insertions uh, in order to restore some very small fragments and to fix them in the right positions. And secondly, we need to exclude pathological environment related to chronic post-traumatic uh, sinusitis and decorative what does it mean? The point is that almost all the destructions of the small bones lead to a negative impact on the sinuses and also small bones. Uh, we need to, to restore the drainage system of the sinuses. Uh, we need to restore dacryocystitis and also tear channels uh, uh, prior to the reconstruction uh, uh, processes and operation itself. Reconstruction or uh, prosthetic care of uh, the lost bones uh, with uh, rigid fixations uh, of endoprothesis uh, and bone structures and outer transplants. Uh, we have been using uh, metal titanium uh, 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 elements and before that we used also bone seams uh, uh, for that matter but you know that both the seams as well as uh, those uh, plastins uh, whether it's made of gold or titanium uh, or vitalium uh, well they have been used for over 100 years and uh, appeared uh, pretty much at the same time so minimization of non-controllable uh, uh, dissolution of uh, bone outer transports uh, by uh, using uh, similar donor parts. Uh, we know that uh, uh, the upper parts uh, and uh, the lower parts of uh, uh, the maxillofacial area, they are uh, can be uh, used for that matter as a small particle, but as uh, for the iliac area and, for example, ribs, uh, they uh, uh, can also be used, uh, but their structure should be pretty similar to that. And sometimes uh, 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 we can see that uh, outer transport of membranous uh, nature behave a little bit different way. And so uh, we talk about uh, the uh, bones of uh, the cranium. We use them also. As an example, here you can see uh, a patient uh, with uh, 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 this area, I mean, in the upper part of the granum, and uh, patients uh, with uh, a total uh, with a, a damaged area within the eye uh, part and also upper part of the granum. So during uh, the uh, 
op uh, the first operations, uh, uh, the part of the bone was removed, uh, and uh, then it was uh, uh, actually uh, damaged uh, the uh, eyeball. Uh, we had uh, a deformation of uh, the uh, cheekbone. Uh, but then we took a transplant in order to uh, eliminate this uh, defect. Another patient, uh, so you can see prior to uh, the treatment, uh, you can see defect uh, of uh, the bone pyramid of the nose, the deformation of uh, the right uh, under eye area. And this same uh, patient, uh, 25 years after the operation, so you can see that after transplantation, the uh, bones behave perfectly well, transplants are still there, and the area under the eyeball also looks really fine. Here we can see uh, the uh, something that happened with the transport of the period of 30 years, um, the stopping of uh, the left eye. Quite a complicated case, and the next presentation you will see that. So here we can see that it is still preserved uh, uh, amongst those patients uh, where we have a trauma in the cheekbone and uh, also the uh, eye uh, bottom. Uh, as we should say that uh, usually this bottom cannot be actually uh, restored. Uh, this eye pit um, uh, also uh, when damaged uh, produces a certain uh, pressure on the uh, eye. And here we can see a certain displacement of the last left orbit and uh, pictures uh, uh, before and after uh, the operation and the prosthetic care. Talking about recovery of uh, some lost uh, uh, bone tissues, uh, uh, both uh, cranium and uh, also uh, face. Uh, uh, we want to uh, restore uh, the bone uh, or uh, erase uh, this effect, but sometimes we don't have the bone to do that. And in this case, uh, uh, we uh, use and we have been using uh, different uh, implants uh, made of silicone and metal. Here we have a titanic and the prosthesis. So for example, here is a, a child eight months old prior to the treatment. So you can see that because of the trauma, uh, he lost almost half of the uh, uh, rear bottom, and the same patients after the treatment. Here we can see a huge defect, a deformation of uh, uh, the cranium and uh, uh, results of the operation. Here we can see also deformation of uh, bullets uh, that affected the cranium and the way it's actually entered and left the cranium. Some bones were affected and uh, transport was installed. Uh, and we used a transplant uh, made of titanium. Fixation of a big viable bone fragments uh, is really important. A small particle should be uh, removed. And uh, here on the X-ray, you can see that uh, uh, big parts uh, are fixed uh, and uh, towards uh, the uh, transport and the small were removed. The reconstruction of uh, the lower eye pit wall. Uh, we can see that a lot of methods have already been used, but we can he use here. Uh, we can see this kind of uh, elements uh, um, uh, made of metal for uh, the eye pit area. Uh, and actually, when you want uh, to uh, restore it, uh, uh, we know how to do that. Uh, but as for uh, the implant, we also need it uh, in order to fix uh, the whole structure. Uh, we uh, can use uh, silicone uh, transport, titanium structures uh, that are in wide usage and have been so over the past 15 or 20 years. Uh, different forms uh, uh, are used uh, also for reconstruction. Usually we have uh, here a uh, section and we use a uh, connectable uh, access uh, and it is then installed at the bottom of the eye pit. Uh, here is an x-ray in 3D format, a patient with a post-traumatic deformation of the eye pit. Uh, and we see how actually it uh, changes. So we know that uh, eye pit uh, um, has a quite 
it's uh, of cut uh, shape. But when we install it, we have to remember that uh, while the uh, uh, reconstruction process, uh, we need uh, to form the initial uh, shape and size of it, uh, of this eyepiece. Uh, we need it uh, to restore the binocular eyesight. Uh, I would like to remind you that uh, a lot of cases have been destroyed, anaphthalm, uh, and many others. I mean, processes that happen to the eye beat. Uh, but we all know that uh, the main destructive factors uh, are caused uh, uh, in the lower uh, wall of the eye pit and also internal wall. Uh, but I would like to remind you that uh, in uh, uh, over 50 or 60 percent cases, uh, we have a destruction of uh, uh, the uh, left uh, uh, wall of uh, the uh, uh, sinus. So you can see how the uh, backward world is displaced a little bit uh, and uh, the way it changes uh, before and after reconstructions. Uh, here is a patient uh, uh, with IPD deconstruction. We see that IPD uh, has been uh, reconstructed and uh, here we can see no more diflopia. Uh, here we also had a reconstruction of uh, the bottom wall of the IPD and the eye walls uh, uh, pretty much at the same uh, level but uh, look at uh, 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 the uh, left eye. So you can see that the back uh, uh, the eyeball uh, demonstrates uh, anaphthalm uh, symptom uh, and uh, the eyeball has been a little bit displayed uh, towards uh, anaphthalm was uh, removed uh, and uh, the whole restoration process was accomplished. One of the clinical manifestations uh, uh, when we have a distraction, uh, the lower uh, eye pit vault is a contracture of eyeball. In this case, this is a uh, left eyeball and uh, also um, uh, the, uh, the muscles of uh, this area, I mean, uh, lower wall of eye pit uh, over effects, and uh, it leads to a contracture of the eyeball in the patient after uh, the treatment. So just to summarize, I would like to say that a specialist uh, working with uh, patients with those deformation uh, bones in the uh, maxillofacial area have to remember that uh, well reconstruction uh, deformed or lost uh, uh, face bones uh, and uh, all those uh, uh, cavities uh, affected, uh, for example, of the cranium or uh, nose sinus, uh, eye pits, uh, that is not to create uh, all the necessary necessary conditions uh, to restore the protective uh, uh, form, uh, sh uh, shape, and uh, function of the cranium, but we also uh, must uh, uh, contribute to the further rehabilitation of the patients in our society. And in order not to waste your time, I will, still, I will start my next presentation and it's dedicated uh, to uh, the 30th anniversary of uh, uh, our pay, uh, experience um, for the reconstruction of um, the lower wall of the eye pit. So I should say that so there are a lot of methods that are used uh, for that particular uh, kind of uh, uh, surgery. Well, basically, we have two main axes, uh, transantral and uh, also direct uh, transdermal via tissues uh, in the uh, down to eye pit area. Uh, so a 30-year uh, experience in uh, the treatment. So the method itself appeared in uh, January 1989, and uh, the idea was uh, pioneered back in that year because uh, back then uh, uh, we worked, uh, and I worked a lot uh, with uh, patients uh, with different defects and uh, deformations of eye beat. Uh, uh, I used to work uh, at a medical establishment, a very renowned one, uh, a scientific uh, uh, and research institute uh, for dentistry, and now it is called Institute for Maxillofacial Industry. And here we used uh, implants made of uh, uh, silicon and metal. And if you look at uh, the volume of uh, converse, uh, this is implants uh, made in the form of uh, a spoon uh, that were meant to support for the iPad and also move uh, this iPad a little bit forward uh, without affecting uh, eye moving muscles, uh, I mean the lower group and also optic nerve. But uh, this uh, implant was installed uh, uh, under the bone, I mean made of silicon, so it is soft and uh, while stalling it, uh, uh, the uh, rear part of it uh, 
what could be unfolded and uh, uh, fixed in the right way. So this is the function uh, that uh, was supposed to be there. It did not actually work. So the main function consisted in increase in elevation of this uh, eye uh, uh, ball. And besides, in the in institution, in the research institution, uh, Game Gold's institution uh, in uh, the Soviet Union institution, they used uh, uh, small parts of cartilages uh, which uh, were uh, uh, conserved in formalin via tissues in trans uh, uh, eye under uh, the eyeball, behind the eyeball, thus increasing the amount and putting the eyeball forward. Uh, they used uh, large cartilages which were put at the bottom of the eye pit, but all that was uh, with an access uh, via the uh, cut in the tissue, or they have not done transconjunctival uh, uh, cuts. Uh, and there was a task uh, uh, to remove diplopy in this way. But uh, there was a huge problem uh, in the point that there was total destruction of the iPad bottom and the supporting part. So there was no iPad bottom at all. It was that much destroyed. Just imagine an explosive fracture at the iPad. Uh, who you eats uh, uh, egg, raw egg for breakfast? Just imagine uh, uh, fractured parts uh, of uh, the uh, eye shell. And they are not recovered. They are diluted under the heaviness of our uh, eyeball. They go down to the upper uh, maxilla uh uh, sinus increasing the amount of eye, the size of eye, the eye pit. Uh, soon these elements were diluted without proper nutrition, and there was a kind of a scar um, uh, pit. And with this uh, soft support, there was silicone, then a cartilage. Uh, patients came to one surgeon, then to another one, and uh, there was a whole group of patients uh, who had to be reoperated. And we had to remove after three or four silicon implants, and the sinus was almost destroyed. Uh, the eyeball came down, imp implants came down to the eye pit, and after some time, the eye pit went down as well. That means that there was no support, and in these cases, there was always an issue: how to make the support out of uh, what? And I would like to say that back in 80s or before, titanium and metal implants uh, actually were not used in clinics in our country and uh, they were quite uh, rarely used uh, abroad as well in connection with this uh, we had uh, the idea of making a rigid construction of the iPad bottom. Here we see the in importance of uh, uh, problems of treatment with patients with this kind of fractures. Uh, this is uh, uh, the trauma of the external part of the iPad, uh, removal of cosmetic defects, inadequacy or insufficiency of the uh, proper parts. So almost everything that I have mentioned in the previous report, main clinical is the distortion of the facial form, uh, limitation of uh, the uh, moving abilities uh, and uh, innervation distortion for the uh, optical nerve. Uh, the principles of treatment uh, with the damages to the eyepit is recovery of uh, the holicity of the balls, reposition of eye or uh, removal of um, uh, limitations for the moving of eyeball, removing of contracture, it's not always possible. Removal of binocular diplopy and also reconstruction of uh, optical nerve. Uh, you see the methodology that we use for more than 30 years already, uh, starting from uh, spring 19. 89. Uh, in red, you can see F-shaped uh, plates, and the back part goes down, and the front part is fixed to the uh, lower eyepit uh, edge, and the rear part to the end of the uh, maxilla. And just imagine that we are in upper maxilla sinus, and the ceiling is the upper wall of the sinus, and the bottom of the eyepit, and the next floor is uh, the uh, 
I bit as well. When the ceiling is destroyed, we fix it like this. We use such a stripe made of plate which will go at the wall without filling the upper maxilla sinus. And it is input through the uh, hole in the foramen in the upper maxilla part. And uh, we uh, put away the back part of the plate up to one centimeter, and that would be safe. Uh, here you can see destruction that occur in uh, upper maxilla sinus. And a patient of 45, a post-traumatized deformation, not only of the bottom of the eye pit and uh, before and after treatment. Uh, here you see the destruction of the bottom part of the eye pit, uh, moving of the uh, checkbone and a reconstruction. Uh, 24 years, uh, post-traumatic deformation of the medium part of the face, a deformation of the eye pit, um, the hip of time on the right, uh, before and after the treatment and a patient with contracture. Uh, what kind of conclusions can be made? Uh, number one, prevention of secondary deformation uh, of um, uh, visceral uh, cranium and positive influence over uh, psychical and social condition of the patients. Uh, uh, facilitation of surgeon work at, uh, in case of uh, trauma with the uh, swelling of uh, tissue uh, during surgery. These are positive moments uh, while we use this methodology. Uh, well, at the uh, acute trauma to go into the iPad, well, who were dealing with it? It is quite hard. Minimal cut and the fiber gets out, uh, prevents you from working, limits uh, visibility and access and all the manipulations uh, are brought down to zero or to huge risk. The usage of uh, the elaborated methodology helps to uh, remove uh, distortions up to 96% in ca of cases. And uh, no, of course, it's not 100%, especially th that is related to post-trauma deformations of the patients when we have clear-cut changes in the group of the muscles in the area of uh, optical uh, moving um, muscles. So there should be ophthalmological surgeons in a wall of the uh, transantral axis uh, helps to arrange a reposition not only of the lower part of the eye pit, but also uh, the walls of upper maxilla sinus. So we, we are speaking about the fact that doing any kind of reconstruction, we should remove uh, the um, nucleus of infection. And uh, uh, this methodology uh, started back in uh, 1989. And in uh, 1992, we had a protected authorship methodology. and. Um, in 2000, we got patent, and uh, the uh, patients uh, were uh, recovered with this methodology in uh, maxillofacial clinics uh, in Nizhny Novgorod. Uh, named after Simashka um, in uh, Erdena Cheers in Research Institution of Eye Diseases uh, for Child Surgery uh, and uh, Traumatology, uh, Central Hospital Number no. One, Number Thirty-Six, and um, actually. Um, more than 2,000 patients were operated on. That's not much. Actually, it's just a drop in the sea. However, uh, generally, the methodology is being implemented. Besides, uh, the methodology is used in Colombia, uh, we had a scientific uh, worker who worked with his paper and prepared also his doctorate, and uh, the methodology is still uh, de being developed. As I have already said, more than 120 scientific works are published, uh, and now there is a scientific work at the fifth uh, dissertation, and the materials were provided by at Russian and international scientific conferences, and the methodology is implemented and actively used abroad, in particular in Colombia, in the USA. It was used for a couple of times by Dr. Seller in Colombia, Dr. Miguel. Thank you for your attention. Uh, the next speaker uh, will uh, talk about uh, treatment of patients uh, with uh, vascular formations.
Uh, good morning, Honorable Chair, Honorable colleagues. Uh, let me introduce uh, the report about uh, treatment of uh, vascular anomalies of the tongue. The problem is very urgent at Russian and foreign conferences. Uh, there is not much attention paid to this problem. There is no clear algorithm of diagnosis and treatment of this group of uh, patients, and sometimes that creates unsatisfactory results of the treatment. Besides, the urgency of the problem is related to the fact that that uh, patients uh, show different kind of complaints, like distortion of swallowing speech, breathing processes, uh, pains while eating, uh, bleeding of the mouth, uh, aesthetic complaints, and uh, taste uh, distortion. Uh, these complaints are related to the fact that the tongue has different functions, uh, taste perception, participation in speech production, mechanical procession of the food, swallowing effect, uh, um, and uh, section of different substances. Uh, uh, one of the uh, properties of the tongue is uh, taste identification. This is due to uh, the uh, receptors which are located at uh, the uh, upper part of the tongue. And due to this uh, recep recipients, we get uh, uh, four basic uh, tastes, uh, sweet, sour, salty, and uh, bitter. And this results in complicated uh, association of tastes. In this report, we are going to speak uh, about vascular malformation, a simple and uh, combined uh, surface form of uh, venous malformation of tan surface or deep form of lymphatic or lymphovenous malformation of tan surface or deep form of lymphatic or lymphovenous malformation of the tan and also lymphoarterium venous malformation of the tan and uh, venous malformation of the tan. Uh, we have a question about how we can help uh, these kind of patients. Uh, starting from 2017, uh, 13, we have uh, treated uh, more than 900 patients uh, with vascular anomalies of uh, head and uh, neck. With a different number of patients with vascular anomalies of uh, head and neck, 3.5% are related to children with uh, vascular malformations of the tongue. This is a small percent, not many children, but this is a very a hard part of the patients which require a special attention. Uh, for six years, we have treated uh, 31 child from 2 to 17 years with lymphatic, lymphovenous, uh, lymphoarterial uh, venous, and venous malformations of the tongue. Uh, we have elaborated clear cut algorithm of diagnosis of uh, children with the vascular malformations of the tongue. It's important to mention uh, that a distortion of uh, one of the point uh, of this algorithm can result in considerable uh, complications during the surgery and post surgical period, uh, which can negatively uh, say uh, on uh, the results of the treatment. So what is the algorithms of diagnosis of children with the vascular malformation? This is general examination and collection of anamnesis, uh, general clinical methods of examination, uh, the uh, blood analysis, uh, uh, examination of uh, soft tissues and malformation, topography of the head and neck uh, vessels, uh, computer tomography and uh, magnetic resonance tomography of uh, um, neck and uh, head with a contrast substance infusion. We have developed a treatment uh, of a lymphatic and lymphovenous malformation of the tongue. If a patient has a surface or deep form or only surface form without uh, uh, macroglossy, then a removal of pathology, uh, pathological uh, tissues is done only with a laser. If this is combined with a microplasy, then uh, the treatment is divided into two parts. The first part, uh, the macroglossy is removed with the plastics of the, the plastic surgery of the tongue and then recovery of the uh, tissues of the tongue. For the first time, we have applied uh, in order to remove uh, the surface form of lymphatic and uh, malformation uh, Russian laser. Uh, it is unique because it can work at uh, two oh, waves. Uh, the wavelength is 1.55 micrometers, and uh, for the puzzles uh, with the uh, blood, it is uh, 1.48 micrometers. Uh, why such length of wave is selected? Together with physical specialists, uh, physics, uh, we have identified that the laser radiation for blood is uh, 0 0.7 micrometers, and for water, 1.55 micrometers. Uh, for this methodology, we got a patent uh, in January 2019.
As related to Venus malformation of the tunnel, we have uh, Venus uh, sinuses, one or several, which are above the surface of the tunnel in uh, blue-violet. This group of children are treated with 3% toxisclerol in one or several stages. 100% we got a good result of the treatment, uh, no classification at early and late post-surgery period. And I would like to show you clinical examples. Patient of two years with lymphovenous malformation of the bottom of uh, the mouth and tongue. Uh, the fine uh, grade uh, macrogloss. You see the complaints of bleeding from the surface of the tongue, and uh, parents uh, uh, were ashamed to show this child uh, among um, other people. We saw the increase of the uh, tongue size. Uh, the surface of the tongue is covered with elements of uh, vascular malformation, uh, bubbles uh, filled uh, with the transparent uh, lymph or lymph with blood. And uh, uh, computer tomography identifies deformation of uh, lower uh, maxilla and uh, total distortion of uh, the tongue tissues and uh, problems with the upper uh, breathing airways. The first stage uh, we performed uh, a plastic surgery of the tongue and removal of macroglossy. And uh, that is a macro uh, tissue. And uh, the second stage uh, of uh, surgery was done after one year. There was surgery and removal of pathological tissues the, from the surface of the tongue with the help of the laser. We see a tongue before the surgery and right after the removal of pathologically affected tissues. So the same patient before and after the treatment. A good functional and cosmetic results. The child started eating by himself without hypersalivation, without uh, bleeding of the tongue, and he can speak now. Uh, the same patient before and after the treatment. Uh, this is a magnetic resonance tomography. Uh, before and after this surgery, we see that uh, the tongue can be located inside the mouth and a stabilized position of the upper airways. Uh, a patient of five years, lymphatic malformation of the bottom of the mouth, uh, sinus, uh, and uh, chin area. The main complaints uh, was disability to eat by himself. We see that at the area of the root of the tongue, we have have a conglomerate of pathological tissues, which resulted in the fact that while swallowing, uh, the child started vomiting, and uh, it was very well expressed. And uh, during his life, he was afraid of eating, and that is why uh, he uh, was hospitalized with hypertrophy, and uh, that was a survival surgery. And uh, we see the problems with the uh, edge of the tongue and the mid third of the tongue, and uh, right after the removal of pathological tissues with the help of the laser and the patient before and uh, after the surgery and the tongue before and after the surgery uh, with a good functional cosmetic result. Now the child can eat by himself uh, and there are no problems with nutrition. A two years patient with venous malformation of the tongue complains uh, of uh, disability to speak, uh, distortion of uh, nutrition, hypersalivation and uh, often bleeding uh, in the mouth area during food uh, taking. Uh, we see total um, distortion of the left part of the tongue. The same patient, uh, how his tongue looks like, uh, uh, venous malformation of the left part of the tongue and deformation of uh, upper and lower jaw on the left part. Uh, the patient uh, had uh, the removal of pathological tissues uh, and uh, the uh, coverage with a 3% solution three years after the treatment. Uh, Treatment. After two years, there was secondary um, processing of the tissues, and uh, this is the outlook of the tan when the patient is eight years old. The same uh, patient with a good functional and cosmetic result, uh, the um, uh, absence of hypersalization and no bleeding from uh, the mouth, and uh, how the tan looks before and after the surgery.
surgery. And I would like to mention that uh, in 2019, 27th of January, the whole country celebrated the 75th anniversary of Leningrad blockade removal, and our patient lives in the hero city, and among uh, the school children, they had a poem readers contest, uh, and our patient won in this contest. Uh, this is true happiness, not only for the patient and his parents, but for us as for doctors who uh, actually invested lots of effort in the rehabilitation process for the patient. One year old patient with a venous malformation of uh, the tongue inside the mouth and a deformation of the jaws. And uh, we identify, you see two pictures uh, in six months, we identify pathological uh, problems with the uh, mouth uh, cavity, macroglossy, and uh, there was a function method of treatment, uh, but without ultrasonic uh, control. We uh, used aspirates uh, for this sclerosis therapy, and after one of the series of sclerosis therapy, uh, uh, stun really grew in size. Uh, uh, that is why it was taken to us uh, during the MRT. We got a total affection of the tank uh, with uh, pathological tissue. Here we can see that the whole cavity was full of tongue, and there is no visualization of uh, the upper airways. At the CT, we can see deformation of the lower jaw, and uh, during interveno, uh, contrasted. Uh, uh, zooming in, we can see some noise between uh, the tongue uh, artery and vein on the left hand side. So no doubt that uh, this artery venous noise is of atherogenic nature because the puncture was uh, done without any ultrasound control. The patient right now is being exposed uh, to the treatment. We are going to do amplification of uh, the shunt and also remove extrapasia. Uh, this is a patient three years. Uh, this is a lymphovenous malformation uh, and also a low cystic uh, uh, surfacial and the deep form semaglaglossia uh, together with uh, uh, jaw deformation. Uh, we should say that that was a really complicated case. Uh, we applied uh, some sclerosis therapy just with, with the previous uh, patients uh, uh, after one of the f some of uh, the uh, sclerosis stages. Uh, the tongue really grew in size. We can see that it was sticking out uh, the uh, cavity uh, with some bleeding and uh, uh, hyper salivation and uh, an ability to eat. Uh, this is CT uh, of uh, the head uh, uh, using a contrasted agent, deformation of the lower jaw, operation, uh, tongue plasty, uh, right on the operation table, uh, micro agent, and histological uh, conclusion, uh, lymphovenous uh, formation. Here we can see what it looked like on the 14th days after the operation and the same patient uh, three months after the treatment. Uh, uh, we can see see very good uh, uh, aesthetic results. Uh, so there was no more salivation uh, uh, or uh, uh, problems uh, with eating, etc. No bleeding. This is before and after pictures, uh, uh, ton before and after the uh, operation. So if we can see uh, that uh, the patients uh, can already uh, eat uh, on her own and uh, well, it looks uh, really nice from the aesthetic point of view. This is a girl. No, this is a boy. A girl and a boy at the same time. And what are their names? So apparently we see that the child started to uh, talk, uh, simply speaking. Here are our conclusions. They are simple but very important. Uh, if we don't uh, comply uh, with the basic principles, uh, we are risking to have very uh, considerable uh, complications uh, before, during and after operations, which might have a direct impact on the results of the operation. So uh, we need uh, to, uh, in case of malformation, stick uh, to a very clear uh, treatment algorithm, and they must be treated at a multi-profile hospital and to be of a multidisciplinary nature and uh, uh, such a treatment should be prescribed uh, straight away without any waiting and uh, then uh, after treatment and uh, good solid clinical results uh, we need to uh, ensure that uh, there is a dynamic monitoring in place uh, during uh, for example venous malformation we can see that uh, within a period of three or four years within the operating area we can see a recurrence of the disease sometimes patients just disappear and they return to us I guess uh, when the recurrence see the radius there uh, is well underway, which is really difficult uh, to uh, eliminate. So thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you very much, Dmitry Gurevich. That was a, a brilliant uh, presentation. I would like to remind you that uh, uh, while uh, choosing a uh, subject of uh, our session, uh, it you always have uh, to uh, choose out of a big variety of different uh, uh, issues. And that is why I would like to appeal to you. Here we have uh, surgeons, uh, we have different heads of departments. Uh, and uh, in case you are interested in those issues, uh, please uh, 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 b send a message to your bosses uh, uh, and to those people in charge uh, so that we can uh, actually address these issues in more detail. We see that those cases were really complex. We all had some kids, we had adults with such pathologies. But anyway, the next presentation is no less important. It is not dedicated to clinical studies, but at the same time, it's really important. Uh, uh, I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Bainovska, and uh, she will be talking to uh, the uh, uh, norm and standard base in the sphere of uh, maxillofacial surgery. Uh, so uh, Tatiana Vladislav Slavna Brailovska uh, organizes uh, regular concilium meetings with participation of uh, prominent figures in uh, maxillofacial uh, surgery. They organized uh, a special profile commission uh, when they really have a very, very intense and hot discussions. Dear colleagues, being a responsible secretary of uh, uh, the commission, I would like to say a few words about this industry from a legal point of view. Well, finally, maxillofacial surgeons uh, got their own normative uh, basis uh, as to how they uh, should uh, uh, perform their duties. Uh, here we have a special decree that was approved by the Minister of Health uh, about on the 14th of 2019 for 2. Uh, so this procedure provides uh, for uh, uh, the rules as to how this medical treatment uh, should uh, be provided to both for adults and children, including uh, different uh, uh, anomalous uh, deformations, inflammatory uh, processes uh, in uh, solid and soft uh, face and uh, neck tissues, uh, uh, different uh, fractures uh, and other affection of uh, uh, the maxillofacial area. Apart from that, uh, here we have uh, types of uh, medical assistance, uh, primary uh, medical and sanitary assistance, uh, specialized uh, and high-tech medical assistance. Um, uh, we also have uh, the emergency uh, service, uh, and also it is segregated uh, for the first time ever. Uh, into two groups, uh, inpatient and outpatient basis. Uh, uh, primary special uh, assistance uh, in the sphere of uh, maxillofacial uh, surgery uh, should first of all be provided uh, by a surgeon, doctor, this dummy, and if there is none, then uh, goes a dentist, uh, then a surgeon, but they uh, must be exposed to a special advanced uh, training programs uh, uh, in uh, uh, maxillofacial to official uh, surgery and also uh, primary special medical sanitary uh, assistance uh, can be also provided with help of uh, uh, um some other doctors, but uh, on provision they, that they have also uh, have undergone uh, relevant advanced uh, training in this domain. So as soon as it has been rendered, uh, a patient uh, uh, should be taken uh, from uh, the inpatient hospital and then sent uh, to a maxillofacial surgeon, so then dentist, uh, then surgeons, uh, or uh, we should say also that uh, the same procedure is applied uh, to children. Uh, for the first time ever, this uh, procedure uh, make a difference uh, between different types uh, of uh, such assistance and also make a difference between emergency and ordinary cases. We talk here about 
inflammatory uh, maxillofacial uh, uh, abscess uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So it has a detailed description there. And also during combined traumas, for example, uh, specialized medical assistance uh, uh, should be rendered uh, with the help of other doctors as well. For example, neurosurgeons uh, are also uh, uh, otolongologists uh, and others, uh, depending on the situation. Uh, in case of uh, anomalies uh, upon a doctor's provision, um, probably we should uh, be uh, uh, obliged to provide a high-tech uh, uh, technology-based assistance uh, with participation of other doctors as well. For the first time ever, uh, we have uh, such a thing as uh, the cabinet or room of uh, maxillofacial surgeons and the special rules and uh, uh, requirements are applied now uh, to uh, this kind of uh, criteria. And also we have a specified figure as to uh, how many doctors we're supposed to have uh, per one uh, settlement, per one uh, city, etc. I would like to draw attention to the fact that in this particular part uh, we have all those uh, diseases uh, uh, that's, uh, uh, and uh, situations uh, uh, that uh, should also be uh, covered as part of the primary uh, medical assistance. Uh, we first of all talk about inflammatory uh, diseases and uh, also uh, uh, tooth saving operations, but of course on provision that anesthesia is uh, done and we don't have any uh, general anesthesia. The main functions of uh, the doctor's room is also uh, to provide uh, uh, further monitoring and preparation of uh, special documents uh, for uh, further treatments uh, in inpatient basis. Uh, we also uh, have uh, a doctor for uh, children, uh, uh, and uh, um, also the same procedures will be applied uh, to this department. Uh, uh, we uh, also have uh, some uh, criteria as to how many doctors uh, we should have in uh, this particular case uh, and specifically for uh, the kid for the kids uh, and uh, our young patients uh, different ages uh, we uh, also see the composition uh, of uh, uh, such an environment uh, though equipment uh, and uh, uh, the instruments uh, that uh, a doctor is uh, supposed uh, to have. Uh, I would like to say uh, that uh, the head of the department uh, uh, should be a person that have a relevant experience in this domain no less than five years. Uh, uh, we also can see some uh, roster requirements and standards uh, uh, for the uh, departments uh, apart uh, except for the operation room. Uh, what kind of materials uh, should be there? There is operation uh, room uh, separately. It must be equipped with specialized uh, equipment for maxillofacial uh, surgery. We also have uh, uh, a special department uh, for our young patients, for children. Uh, and again, here we have information uh, about uh, the uh, suppose head of uh, the department uh, with uh, a relevant experience of no less than five years. Uh, some roster requirements and rules. And also the composition of the departments and uh, all the instruments and uh, uh, hardware materials and equipment it should be equipped of. So we have also information about orthodont and also information about uh, dentistry technician. The next document uh, that is now uh, being uh, uh, examined uh, by the Ministry of Labor is the one that appeals uh, to uh, the surgeons, uh, maxillofacial surgeons. Uh, it uh, uh, was first uh, uh, 
the pioneered by the state structure and the Ministry of Labor, and it should be put into effect uh, no later than in 2022. So this work uh, was uh, accomplished together with uh, our Association of Maxillofacial Surgeons, uh, and uh, um, Academician Kolakov uh, is actually uh, the one who headed to this uh, work. Uh, here we have uh, general information, description of uh, the functions uh, and uh, some other provisions related to, to the subject. Uh, here we can see generalized uh, uh, scope of uh, competence and duties, uh, a provision of uh, primary specialist medical sanitary assistance uh, uh, and a special uh, uh, assistance uh, uh, in uh, maxillofacial surgery. Uh, we also have uh, requirements uh, for education and experience uh, and practical uh, <clears throat> uh, working experience. I would like to say that uh, here we have a number of functions uh, uh, that fall within the components of maxillofacial surgeons. Uh, quite uh, a short uh, uh, list, uh, but uh, I should say that uh, maxillofacial uh, surgeons uh, uh, should uh, uh, Perform that uh, uh, using a local anesthesia and uh, quite a big list of uh, different uh, functions and duties uh, here. Uh, quite uh, a detailed list. Uh, uh, this is something that should be performed by maxwell fashion surgeon on an inpatient basis. It's true that uh, uh, well, this work uh, has been accomplished uh, together with uh, our specialist in the plastic surgery, and we should say that uh, there are apparently a certain cross section between uh, this domain and also their scope of uh, field of expertise. We decided to have a really detailed list in order to enlarge it a little bit and have uh, a really detailed information regarding our maxwell facial surgeons uh, and another legal aspects so that I would like to draw attention to. You know that uh, very often uh, Anatoly Alexeyevich, uh, as a chief uh, uh, specialist uh, at uh, the Ministry of Health, uh, is approached by uh, doctors with the following questions. Uh, they ask uh, uh, him uh, to clarify situations where they perform, for example, their professional duties, uh, uh, maxillofacial surgery, but at the same time they are not certified as uh, maxillofacial surgeons. Uh, we decided uh, to ask for some clarification, uh, uh, and so we address this uh, uh, question uh, to the Minister of Health in order to get some kind of a permission uh, to act uh, as a maxillofacial surgeon for people that have a higher degree and uh, um, this uh, um, with the medical education, but at the same time without a prior qualification and maxillofacial surgeons uh, uh, less than uh, if five years, and in December uh, we got uh, this uh, uh, clarification, so they said that uh, in line with uh, point eight uh, of uh, the uh, decree of Minister of Health uh, uh, Russia number 66N, specialist uh, with a higher uh, medical edu um, the degree in the medical uh, sphere. Uh, Well, uh, with a don't have any medical or a higher pharmaceutical education that does not correspond to the qualification requirements, but they have a practical working experience uh, uh, according to a medical uh, specialty that uh, is uh, specified uh, should uh, not exceed five years uh, on provision that uh, they uh, are exposed uh, to a particular training, advanced training, and after that and upon completion, uh, they can uh, uh, keep on working. Uh, in the position of maxillofacial surgeon. So, in other words, if uh, there is uh, an information uh, uh, confirming that uh, such a specialist uh, has uh, an overall working experience uh, starting from uh, 10 years and uh, more, then upon completion of such advanced uh, uh, courses, uh, 100 hours and uh, uh, more, uh, they can get a special certificate uh, and then they can work as a maxillofacial surgeons for those uh, who have uh, working experience uh, from 10 years and more. 
sure uh, they uh, can uh, be uh, uh, can undergo such a training uh, 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 100 hours or up to 500 hours. So our specialists uh, who have been working in maxofascial uh, sphere, but those who don't have a certificate of uh, such a surgeon, they can uh, get it um, uh, through uh, these uh, special uh, advanced training courses. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's not very clear how they got there without certificates because uh, they cannot be taken to a job officially. I would like to explain. Well, actually, we have a totally unique uh, profession, and we made statistic research turned to Ministry of Healthcare. Actually, we have around uh, 1,000. Uh, people uh, who are related to maxillofacial surgery and uh, in the department of maxillofacial surgery for instance in the siberian federal uh, district uh, far eastern uh, regional district uh, we often have uh, dentists and surgeons who are performing the work of maxillofacial surgeons so mainly this is related to this kind of specialists uh, thank you clear so dear colleagues at this our session is over uh, it is almost completed, uh, so have a good day. Thank you for your participation. And uh, please, uh, head of departments, uh, come to me. All the best.